Hey guys, how's it going? I got you pointing in this direction at my vise with uh, Dino Joe's uh, multi-use uh, uh, chamber cutter that I purchased off him the other day. I got it all dirty because I used it. Um, I will give you guys my thoughts on this. Uh, I like it. Um, I like it a lot. I think it offers uh, something uh, for the guys that uh, like might not have a four jawed chuck on their lathe or, or uh, there's there's probably more ways to cut chambers than what I do but I've got about five different th this gives me about a fifth different option on how I do chambers and I bounce between all of them some are pretty safe some are uh, not safe at all and carries carries high risk. I don't show that stuff on my channel because I don't want you guys trying something that I do and then you get all mad at me because you tried what I do and it smoked your cylinder. So there's there's some things I just don't don't show. Uh, I, I show a few few times of doing it on the lathe that that's a pretty conventional uh, way of doing it. Uh, for as far as a safe an effective way uh, what Joe come up with here and uh, what he come up th this has been done before the the, the tooling in, in a mandrel uh, has been done for a long time I know a lot of builders that do it but what Joe come up with is instead of having 15 or 20 of these mandrels you have one mandrel in these nice adaptable sleeves that let you it, it, it makes this takes up less space less machine work you'll have less money into all the materials of having a bunch of different mandrels uh, I have seen a couple people have something similar to this to, to, as, a, as a base stop but uh, a lot of the guys I know that cut with mandrels a lot of times uh, they just slide their calipers in there and take a measurement off and then do a few turns and then just keep keep going but uh, I think this is a very safe if you use this right you got it you got to know what you're doing um, I've cut with mandrels before so I didn't test on a junk cylinder um, if, if you're gonna start learning how to to use this I strongly recommend having some burned up junk cylinders to practice on first till you get the feel of it well um, I I went right ahead and uh, did the first first cut on the uh, CS8000 here I, I took about about 40 out uh, flat wise but I'm not done I'm gonna go to one of my other methods and I'm going to cut the piston and then I'm going to uh, chamber uh, cut the chamber on an angle as well uh, for for this particular uh, build, but uh, the key when you go to when you go to put these on for me, uh, you know, do it real nice and gentle and slow. I like to have the cutter facing me. Uh, that way I know where it is at all times. So, because if you get in a big ink and just cram this down there, you're going to take this cutter piece and you're going to gouge your your nicosil up. So that's probably the only danger that I, I see where you guys could possibly uh, mess up. Well, there's, there's, there's another thing too, but uh, just be in mind when you go to put put it on, I think Joe's got an instructional video on there. They're, they're slopping there. Pull it towards you and just gently, it's no rush guys, just gently gently go down until it's down and see there's see there's slop in there. You push that you know you push it this way and all I did was turn this just real gentle like this with uh, moderate pressure on it I didn't put hardly any downforce on it just I just let the tool do its work and it took me five minutes uh, maybe to cut 40 out of the chamber on this and then when you go to pull this off pull it back towards you 
and gently lift up so you're not dragging the, the cutter tool up and down your uh, cylinder wall. Um, I highly recommend this if you guys are wanting to get to step your next game up on, on how you're doing your, your, your builds and stuff. Being able to adjust your combustion chamber and uh, squish along with machine work uh, opens up different options uh, for you guys to go on builds. Like, the, especially this style cutter, if you're trying to lower uh, your exhaust roof. Uh, this is a very simple, effective, um, you know, I'm happy with it. Uh, first time using it was a total success. Gave me zero, zero issues. Uh, if it starts to chatter on you, slow down. It, it, you know, if it's starting to do chatter, wave bump, slow down and just turn it slower with smoother pressure. And then once the bottom of this bottoms out here, just keep your pressure uh, towards it. If you don't, you'll end up cutting, you'll, you'll end up not cutting flush to the, to the cylinder wall and then your piston could run into it. But uh, just keep twirling it around real gentle. Don't get on there and like try to push down. It's it's not a race to cut your your, your chamber. Um, the don't try to put this in like a lathe and have this turning around and try to hold this on there like that. That would be uh, not wise at all. But uh, I mean, I haven't even uh, typically if you're using that style cutter, I would probably recommend using like a 120 grit on. A conventional style of mandrel and you could make them out of wood you can use an old piston whatever and put some sticky 120 grit sandpaper on it and probably just go in there and gently you know twirl it around just to knock any of the the machining but the the results I got from this uh, that would be runnable I, I w wouldn't be scared at all to, to run this I have a mile I don't know if you guys can can see my black black mark in there that's how far i have on this thing before it'll free port um and if you're doing your cylinders always always drop your piston in and do a sharpie line like that so you know how much that you've got uh before cutting your chamber because there's nothing worse than cutting your chamber and then finding out at top dead center you can see under your piston and it's free porting uh, some saws will run a 660 will run I ran 660s free ported and not free ported and not noticed uh, much of a difference between In fact, I think a lot of the big bore 660s come right out of the box on little cheap kits. I think they come free porting right from the get go unless they fix the issue. At least the last two I ever played with free ported and I didn't even touch them. Uh, but as far as, you know, I want to give you guys my honest opinion on this. Uh, I think it is an awesome tool for the arsenal. Uh, for the moderate performance enthusiast that wants to port uh, saws and have the ability to change your compression and uh, your numbers on your saw, uh, it's it. Uh, I'll I'll make a video later on talking about. Uh, we'll use the the, the cutaway and the uh, we'll use my whiteboard. We'll we'll do a video and I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, what some of the advantages is. I, I just wanted to give a review on, on this to let you guys know that uh, it's well worth the money. Um, one thing, and it's not a bad thing, one thing that I would, would probably uh, do different is uh, what it would probably add to the cost is uh, maybe having like a ball, ball bearing and a spring with uh, a little round indent where you could slide these on and then they just just click into place to hold them so you wouldn't have to use the tape that's just just one I one idea um, you know like a little snap lock thing uh, but it would probably severely add to the cost and then maybe having this plate thicker I, I think if it had a wider surface area uh, going to tighten it down it would have less chance of cocking on there and being like 12 thousandths on this side and 10 on this side uh, I think if this was thicker it would be easier to it would almost self-center itself up a little little better 
but I understand why he did. I mean, this is compact, it's neat. He made these thin, so out of all the materials he's buying, it, it, it cuts down on production cost. I, I completely understand it. Uh, and these these rings could be made out of plastic. Uh, uh, for those that buy just the mandrel, and, and you guys got like a little, like my little red uh, hobby lathe there, that little nine by twenty. And if uh, you guys had one of them, you could buy you could buy you could make these rings out of brass, aluminum, even steel if you wanted to. Uh, I, I kind of like the I, idea of the the, the plastic because it's it, you know pushing on the cylinder. This is not gonna uh, tear up your uh, nicosil any. It might get a little dirt or carbon or something if you don't clean the. And if you're doing this on a used cylinder, I would highly recommend. Uh, taking a little wire brush and some super clean and going in there and using your, your Dremel or your, your flex shaft grinder with a wire brush on it and get as much carbon out of it as you can. I don't really think you'd want to be getting the powdery carbon uh, between you know getting it embedded in your rings or in your cylinder wall. Uh, it's just something to think about but uh, all in all I'd, I'd say this thing's uh, ease of use. It's a you know, nine out of ten. I mean, you do got to under, understand the concept of how it works and what you're doing. Um, but I guarantee, after if you're doing five five cylinders, uh, there'll probably be muscle memory, and it's just a walk in the park. This was so easy compared to setting one up in the in the lathe. And I would imagine if I got in here and made shims, I could probably pitch pitch this. Uh, to get different angles for the angled chamber cuts too but I'm not going to attempt that I have a system that I use for my, my angled chamber cuts and I'm very familiar with it so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what I know on that So, but uh, very 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 pleased uh, with this Joe you knocked it out of the park um, I think it's a great tool um, but I you know I know Joe got swamped uh, with getting these uh, made for people or whatever. I don't know if he's going to be making any more or not, but uh, if if he is, uh, those that want them, if he is going to start making these, you better get in line and, and get them a uh, very handy tool. Um, I think with these being out there, we're going to see a whole lot of fairly fresh builders start creating some uh, pretty monstrous saws. Uh, you know out of their sheds and garages and all that stuff uh, which is cool um, I'm, all, I'm all for it I I, I love it uh, watching you guys uh, I get people that talk to me all the time I, I love hearing and watching you guys take what I put out there put your own spin on it put it in your saw and then you guys message me or you leave it in the comments or whatever um, you know it, it makes me feel good that I was able to help you guys and uh, Joe should feel pretty good about making these and putting them out there because this is going to help you guys uh, as well if you if you don't want to buy all the machine work to do chambers the other way. But uh, I'm going to call this a vid here. I'm going to be tinkering on and off on this uh, 8000 and hopefully I can make it pretty rowdy. So uh, you guys jump over to Joe's channel and... Uh, him a huge thanks for uh, producing these for us for the saw community that's awesome you guys take it easy and have a good one